body of phantoms and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to Fans Monsters personal reports where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to Phantoms and Monsters and the Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team. So thanks for joining me. Uh, the channel can be made is made possible by you uh, clicking the subscribe button and by you uh, sharing our program and super chat and super thanks donations are appreciated. You can uh, click the dollar icon uh, located below the chat box and uh, also the buy me a coffee link and banner are also available so thanks for your consideration now if you're in the chat and you have a question please use caps but uh try to hold off until i get to the last presentation which i will i'll mention while i'm doing it and uh then then start uh entering your questions then so i don't get behind and you know i can find it but you so anyway, tonight, at the end of uh, 2019 and into early 2020, it was apparent that O'Hara International Airport in Chicago was becoming an important location in the Chicago winged humanoid phenomena. Now, cargo truck drivers, uh, security officers, airline pilots, and airline workers were coming forward with reports of sightings and encounter with red-eyed, bat-winged humanoids throughout the property. So we're going to talk about some of those early, early reports at the airport and, uh, you know, kind of get a kind of get a feel for what people were seeing and reporting to us and uh what where we came to the conclusion that this may actually the airport itself may actually be a a pretty important hot spot so uh, on tuesday november 26th uh 2019 at about 6 30 p.m uh, we re uh, well, Manuel over at UFO Clearinghouse received a, a report uh, from an individual, and they stated, I was at the airport picking up a load, so this was a driver, at Nippon, uh, the cargo area. I was already backed into a dock and was standing away from the truck smoking a cigarette while they loaded my truck. Now, I was looking forward I was looking toward, excuse me, looking toward the runways in the direction of the tunnel. And that's when I noticed something that looked like a large bird standing just outside of the fence by the parking lot. Now, it was not hard to miss because uh, two street lamps were nearby. It looked like a person with wings that were stretched out and flapping. I was walking away from the fence towards the open field and then began to flap its wings and disappeared. And that's all they sent. And uh, so Manuel got this. He received it and he was able to get onto the phone with the witness. Uh, he, he said that the witness primarily speaks Spanish and the actual report was translated. Uh uh, his daughter and her boyfriend actually helped in in uh, writing the report for for Manuel. So the the witness was standing away from his truck as it was being loaded, smoking a cigarette, and uh, he was standing near the parking lot, and it was illuminated by this being was illuminated by two street lamps. Now, the witness later stated that the creature was about seven foot in height, using the the fence as a point of reference. And when, uh, 
Emmanuel asked him about, uh, I asked him how he was able to be so certain as to the height of the being. The driver stated that he's been to the location multiple times, and he estimates the fences were about eight foot high. So when he described this being, he kept saying it looked like a demonio or demon or duende or goblin, which and it was solid black. The witness said that he saw nothing that looked like eyes, and he assumed that the creature might have had its back turned towards him. He stated that it walked with a gait like a bird and that it was flapping its wings as it walked towards the large field that was by the runway and disappeared into the night. Um, when it happened, he started crossing himself and, and uh, asking the Virgin Mary for protection. He put out his cigarette and quickly walked back to his truck. And uh, he went into the facility and uh, was asking people about it in there. And somebody had told him that there had been some sightings in Chicago. Uh, he also stated that uh, before when he was a teenager living in Mexico, he remembers reports of a black winged creature that was circling open field that he and other children had been playing soccer in. Uh, he stated that then it circled the field and made a loud screeching sound before it uh, flew off into the surrounding forest. And he said the reason why he noted it was it was like a week before a large earthquake in Mexico City, and that was the earthquake in September 1985. So, uh, you know, he kind of believed that it was like a harbinger of the earthquake. So. You know, of course, some people do believe that these are harbingers. So anyway, that was one of the early sightings. So in um, in February, December, excuse me, Friday, December 6th, 2019, the witness, and we'll use the initials DR, and this was also, re uh, this was reported to uh, Tobias, actually. And uh, the witness DR had left work at a cargo facility at O'Hare International in Rosemont, Illinois. And some people give the address to the, the airport as Rosemont. So that's why I'm saying that. So DR turned left from Patton Drive onto West Higgins Road after traveling west for approximately 600 feet. He noticed a tall, dark entity with wings standing by the fence to his left. Now, according to DR, uh, and on the map he provided, the entity was 100 foot or so from him. DR noticed the strikingly red glowing eyes of this winged humanoid. He stated that he later found a uh, previous reported uh, incident on Phantoms of Monsters and that it was reported at O'Hare in the cargo area. Now, his sighting was kind of on the north end of the airport, not down by the cargo areas. Um, DR said that he was shocked at the time and felt an overwhelming sense of dread rush over him. Now, the witness is very credible, according to Tobias, and, and promised to offer any follow-up uh, if he hears or sees anything else. So uh, at that time, that was the seventh reported sighting that we had in the Rosemont uh, O'Hare International area in, in a two-month period. And little did we know, we were going to get a lot more. So this next report was sent in to Manuel. And they stated, I'm reluctantly re writing to you to report something that I saw a week ago on Tuesday. Uh, this was on uh, Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. I was heading toward one of the airport cargo hubs. There are multiple hubs scattered throughout the airport. This particular one was the one located on Express Center Drive. And it houses at least six cargo companies. So this is down on the southwest 
part of the airport where the cemetery is located. And that's an area where it was really a lot of sightings. I was approaching the creek heading towards Montrose Avenue when I saw this large person standing down in the creek bed. Now, I, I, I will have to say to you, and I did forget to mention, this individual was a, uh, was a TSA security guard. So he says, I was approaching the creek heading, headed towards Montrose Avenue when he saw this large person standing down in the creek bed. And that this creek bed, I don't know why, it's really, it's really a drainage, um, I don't know, I don't know, like a drainage stream that comes through that airport area. Well, it was standing in there. He said, I stopped thinking it was maybe a trucker who decided to wander down there and relieve himself. So I put on my lights. And I stopped my vehicle, and I was preparing to get out when this man turned towards me, and I saw two very bright red eyes. This thing appeared to be looking straight at me, and then it turned away and walked away. Now, as it did it, it unfurled a set of wings, and it began to flap them. It looked like a large goose when it wants to take off into the air. It took off into the air and was gone into the darkness. Now, I was left there wondering what the hell I had just happened and what I had just seen. Now, after I got home, I spent the next few days looking for similar sightings, and that's when I came across the website. Now, I'm going to be blunt here. I, I don't believe in hobgoblins and little green men. I'm sure that there must be a rational explanation for this. I have a reputation for being grounded and level-headed. I have worked too hard to get where I am and to have all this trash by saying that I saw a red-eyed flying man, yet that's what I saw. I'm torn between reporting this and keeping my mouth shut to protect my retirement. Uh, and if I do report this, I want everything to be done to protect my identity, which Manuel did talk to the gentleman and um, by phone. And, of course, we everything's confidential. And... Uh, we only we only uh, report what what the witnesses allow us to report. Manuel stated the witness was extremely hesitant to talk and expressed a reluctance to proceed any further, but was convinced to speak with with him after assurances were made that his identity would be withheld and not be made public. Now he he states he stated that he worked at O'Hara's O'Hara since two thousand and three and that he had never seen anything like what he witnessed on December 3rd, 2019. He said that uh, the area is heavily trafficked. There's heavy traffic in the area because it being in cargo area, a lot of trucks go through there. Um, he said it's, it was by one of the cargo hubs located around the perimeter of O'Hara, which I said was in the southwest area, and it's active 24 hours a day. Now, the witness says he, what he saw looked like a man standing down by the creek and believed it was a person trying to relieve himself and going to stop and tell them to stop. This is when the witness said that he saw the two bright red eyes appear as the creature turned its head. He stated that it appeared as if it was looking at him. He then stated that the entity began to walk away from him, opened up what appeared to be a pair of wings, and was going out of sight within a matter of seconds. So uh, again, he he mentioned to Manuel about uh, being fearful about not about losing his job by making this report. Uh, now Manuel did state he was kind of in an agitated state, but uh, you know Manuel talked to him as long as he could, and uh, then, you know, he actually became a little upset, and then they stopped talking. And that does happen on occasion. Um, you know, th this whole, th this these whole, these scenarios at, at O'Hare, I mean, you got to think about the witnesses themselves, especially people who are working there and um, or with, the, the airport security or TSA security or airline pilots and, you know, air traffic controllers, 
we've had reports from all of them. And um, they are fearful of the job. And, and more recently, the airport has the airport uh, uh, powers that be have been warning people about coming forward. Uh, I, I think that may be a reason why the reports have probably slacked off within the last year or so. I mean, we're still getting reports, but nothing like we were getting two or three years ago. So uh, I received a phone call from an eyewitness who stated that he and his son observed a Cape Wing humanoid in Bensonville, Illinois. Now, Bensonville uh, is at the southwest uh, so it's a southwest suburb of um, O'Hare. We've had a lot of sightings in this this uh, this neighborhood, this community. But it's uh, it's right across the road from O'Hare and from the cargo areas. Now, the eyewitness Brian said that one evening in August 2006, so this is an older account. <clears throat> he and his adult son were sitting in the back porch of their home in Bensonville, Illinois. This location is a village that borders the southwest edge of O'Hare International Airport. Now, the eyewitness's neighbor had a large pine tree in the adjacent yard. Now, both Brian and his son were looking in that direction when a large dark being quickly dropped to the ground from the tree and grabbed a squirrel with its talons. The squirrel was literally screaming during the attack. The dark being then quickly jettisoned up into the tree. Both witnesses could hear the being moving up the tree, but neither caught sight of it again. Now, this description was somewhat different than what we had received in the past. Uh, he described the humanoid as having strong and long grasshopper-like legs with muscular thighs. It seemed to have cape-like wings that were wrapped around the body. Now, these wings were never unfurled. He estimates the height of the humanoid of about six foot or so. There was no distinct head or eyes, but the overall size and form was too large to be any bird that this longtime resident has ever seen or heard described in the area. Now, both witnesses were shocked at what they had seen. <clears throat> now, I asked about getting a photo which I was told that the event happened so quickly that they never had a chance to do so. And of course it was in the daytime. Now, um, and the, so the reason he came forward was he, he stated that his mother, his elderly mother who lives in Wisconsin read about the Chicago side and, and urged him to contact me. So, uh, yeah, that was probably the first um, sighting that we had had, and I don't know if we had any since then, where the, these winged humanoids had actually attacked an animal. And uh, as well as the legs being grasshopper-like grasshopper -like with towns. So quite interesting report. So Manuel received another report from uh, February 21st, 2020, where a security officer at O'Hare uh, reported seeing a tall, black, red-eyed, winged humanoid along the fence that bordered the cargo area and the tarmac. Now, he stated, I wanted to tell you about something I saw on February 21st, 2020 at O'Hare International Airport. Now, he worked for uh, one of the cargo companies at as a security guard, and he was on duty at O'Hare International Airport and was assigned to do routine escorts for trucks that were coming in and out of the airport. Now, many of these trucks are there to deliver cargo going outbound on planes and are required to have an escort to and from their drop-offs. Now, I was doing one such escort on that night at about 2,200 hours. Now, I had escorted the uh, truck to the unloading facility at the post office, and they have a do they have a very large post office facility. We've had a couple sightings around that facility as well. 
and I was waiting on the truck to be unloaded. Now, I stepped out of my vehicle to have a cigarette, and I saw something move out of the corner of my eye near the fence, and I decided to go see if it was someone trying to climb the fence. We had had a few incidents in the past few weeks of people coming onto the airport ground either to sit and watch the airplanes come and go, but we have had also had incidents of investigators coming onto the grounds in response to the multiple reports of the Mothman. Now, we had been told to report these individuals and escort them off the grounds if we ever run into them during our shifts. Now, I assumed it, I assumed it was going to be the same thing as before. We roll up on them, they tell, you know, and tell them that they're trespassing and escort them off the property. Uh, we have had our share of these sort of calls and knew to be firm but professional with them. Now, I rolled up to the fence, but what I saw wasn't human. It looked like a very tall human, but it was solid black with glowing red eyes and had a pair of wings that were outstretched and must have measured at least 10 foot from tip to tip. I got out of my car and shined my flashlight on it. This thing screeched out loud. It almost sounded like the brakes on a train, and we have heard that many times. Very loud and high-pitched. It then turned its back to me and flew straight up into the sky and took off like a bullet. I could see it as it took off, its wings flapping until it faded into the night. Now, I heard it screech again, and before I knew it, it was gone. And I couldn't see it anymore. I drove back to where the truck was. And I told the people there at the dock. And they said that people had seen it at least a few times. I waited until the truck was ready and escorted it back. And retort reported to my supervisor, who told me it was probably just a large owl. And, you know, we've had a lot of people say that their supervisors and such have, have been telling them that they're just seeing big owls. Uh... He did tell me to be careful in the future uh, when I'm out at night, which I, I thought was kind of odd. So um, he said it, it did scare him. Uh, now I'm asking you to please not mention my employment, uh, the company I work for, and uh, to keep him keep his name out of it and uh, be very confidential about this. So, so anyway. Manuel pretty well stated uh, in his summation what was said in the uh, report. So the next sighting was a pilot and co-pilot observed a wing tubanoid while taxiing towards the terminal at O'Hare International Airport on the morning of May 31st, 2020. And this also came into Manuel. The sighting was on May 31st, 2020, at approximately 7.30 a.m. Now, the original email from the witness is as follows. Good morning. I want to reach out to you in regards to an incident that occurred on the morning of Sunday, May 31st, 2020. A little bit of critical information first. My name is, and it's redacted, and I'm a pilot, and he gave what airline he was with, but that's redacted as well. I was flying into a Hare International at approximately 7.30 a.m. that morning. Now, as a, we were taxiing off the active runway and towards the terminal, I spotted something out of the corner of my eye. I turned to see a large, black, human-like creature fly up and into the sky. I saw this creature for about four seconds before it flew up and above the cockpit window and out of sight. I immediately shouted it out to my co-pilot who caught a glimpse of it before it flew out of sight. We were both awestruck by this sighting, and it, it, it let you know it let the, us dumbfounded. So I radioed the incident to the ATC, which is the tower, who made a note of the incident. The rest of the flight was uneventful, and we disembarked our passengers with without incident. Now. I brought this incident up amongst colleagues online and was told by several other pilots that they had seen or heard from others who have seen the exact same thing. Uh, this is an abbreviated version of the incident, but I hope it helped you to relay the incident that occurred to me and my co-panel on that morning. 
Uh, it, this was located just off of runway 28R by Terminal 2. So uh, Manuel talked to this, this pilot. Uh, he stated that they were flying a Boeing 777-200ER. The witness says something caught his attention from the corner of his eye, and he, he turned and saw this winged humanoid. Uh, he said it was at least six foot in height, black, and looked like it had uh, thin looked like a thin human with large wings. When asked if the wings were making any movement, he stated that they were straight out in what appeared to be a gliding configuration. Now, the, uh, he stated that he alerted the co-pilot who was able to see the entity for a few seconds before it disappeared above the window of the airplane. Um, he called out to the air traffic controller tower, and they, they stated they made a note of it. I asked the witness to please give a more detailed description, asked if he had seen any eyes, and if he had done, you know, seen the color. Uh, but he had no other detail beyond other than the hum human shape and the dark wings. He talked about, his, again, with this conversation with other colleagues. Apparently, uh, this was a, a actual pilot's forum online where he mentioned this at. And he, that's where other pilots who have flown into a heron and mentioned they had seen it as well. So there are a lot of people out there who haven't been reporting this. And uh, hopefully, we were hoping we'd get more sightings from pilots and air traffic controllers. Uh, we did get an air traffic controller sighting later on, and I'll, I'll talk about that next week. Um, well, anyway, I, I will tell you this, this sighting in particular, again, he, he stated that air traffic controllers didn't make a note of it. It was in the log. From what I understand, he saw the log and he, he did see it in there. So when I got a hold of the, um, the Great Lakes uh, region office of the FAA to file a um, FOIA request. Of course, I didn't get. I the only thing I got from them was that they never received a report. Now, I don't know. I don't know if they called the airport. I don't know if they contacted them asking for the report. But they stated to me that they never received anything. So Tobias also filed a FOIA request. And he got the exact same uh, response that I got. So, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, the government isn't going to help us. would not going to help us out on this. So, uh, anyway, now this uh, this last report for the night, and you can start putting your questions up. Is a second airline pilot at O'Hare International comes forward to report and describe the O'Hare Mothman. And this came into Manuel. Uh, my name is Bruce. This is what he writes. My name is Bruce. And I'm a pilot. For, and it's redacted. He has the uh, he has the airline and says that he was has been flying with them since 2008. Uh, before he became a pilot, an airline pilot, he served six years in the United States Air Force. He says, I have over 9,000 hours of flight time and have flown a variety of aircraft in my career in virtually all types of weather. The incident I'm about to tell you happened on Thursday, August 8th at 2000, in 2019. And this was previous to the other sighting at O'Hare International, approximately 1,800 hours. Now, I had flown into O'Hare the previous day and had stayed at a hotel for the night. And I was due to fly out at uh, 2,000 hours to the U.K., I was taking the airport shuttle towards the terminal. Now, as I looked out the window, I saw a large human with enormous wings and glowing red eyes perched upon a rail and looking straight at me. The being appeared to be squatting down on the rail, but had its wings completely open and moved them slowly as he stared at the shuttle bus, bus in which as it drove by. Now, I knew it was watching me, as its head swiveled and followed the shuttle as we passed, its eyes locked on me the entire time. 
I was startled, and I'll admit it, very frightened, not only by this encounter, but the absolute boldness of this thing, as it did not move or attempt to hide itself as we approached, knowing that it was clearly seen. And this is another aspect of these sightings. They are not timid whatsoever. Uh, we passed it on the outside lane where our closest, appro our closest approximately was 15 foot away where it was perched. Now, I, I never once flinched or attempted to hide. It never once flinched or attempted to hide itself. It just stayed put and watched as we passed. When we did pass, I attempted to look back to see if it was still perched there. I saw nothing. I can only assume that it must have flown off as we passed. I have heard stories of the O'Hara Mothman, or as some have been calling it, as the Batman. But I simply dismissed them as nothing more than fantasy, an urban legend that was associated with an already spooky airport. Uh, and this airport, like I had mentioned before, has had a lot of different paranormal reports in the past. I mean, who hasn't heard of the weird UFO sightings over O'Hara and the stories of ghosts and whatnot? Now, what happened to me that evening changed my entire view of these stories. So when I saw the post asking for pilots to step forward and share their stories, I took advantage of the opportunity to tell my encounter on this O'Hara Mothman. So, uh, again, Manuel reiterated what he had stated. Uh, again, the wings were about 10 foot from tip to tip, uh, about six and a half foot high in height. Uh, if it was standing, but it was about four foot tall as it was perching on onto the railing. So, uh, yeah, you know, now this in the, this pilot did present his credentials to Manuel, and also presented his military service record and 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 everything. So, you know, this is a good report. This is. You know, it makes the the you know, the witnesses more credible. So um, he did say that he would try to have others come forward, and uh, but quite frankly, that you know that was the last pilot sighting that was reported to us. So of course, I believe the airlines are a big reason for this. They're trying to keep things quiet. They have been trying to keep things quiet for the last couple last couple of years, anyway. So. Let's get to the questions. I think I've got them here. So, short order cook one. I wonder if there is an air traffic live feed that could go back and view by date and time. You know, I have checked into that. And uh, I, I think. I think any videotape that or any video or digital video that is taken, this is what I, I've been told, that is is recorded, goes to the FAA. I don't think it's I don't think it's kept at the airport. I, I think the the FAA gets it. Uh, I think they do that in case of accidents or for liability or whatever. But no, that's a good question. Um, yeah, and we did check into that. I have checked into that. So, again, short order cook one. Has there been any reports of creatures coming from a graded vent on a road gutter, like a water drain? I RV'd a long oblong vent on the road that led to the underground car park for something 2017. Now, uh, shorter cook. Uh, she she's actually on the team. She's an RVer. Uh, I have worked with her. She lives in Australia. I have worked with her on several cases, and she's done several cases for me in the past. Um, I don't know. I have to go back and check if if, if that is the case. Uh, it very well could be. Um, but I will look. And I'll get back to you then.
David McGinnis, how long would the wings have to be to been able for a creature seven foot tall to fly? Well, that's another thing. That's why we we believe there's a, a definite supernatural aspect to these creatures because, quite frankly, the, the size and weight of these things, I, I would estimate, is anywhere from 50 to 75 pounds, maybe more. And uh, with the size of the wings, the width of the wings, I, I I would figure about 15 to 20 foot just to get it to glide. I don't know. I you know the there have been instances where people have stated that they have literally seen these things jettison like a rocket from a standing position. We have had several where the, the wings have been flapping to to get a lift on the uh, of the creature but no i you know the size of these beings is just really too big aerodynamically to be able to fly with the size of the wings that are being reported so uh yeah that's why i believe there's definitely a, a supernatural aspect to these creatures and double D asked, I wonder what the FAA knows. Well, I, I'd like to know as well. Uh, she, double D also asked, what if one of the creatures would fly into an aircraft engine? That's dangerous. Yeah, and I think that's the, one of the biggest reasons why the airport is is, is trying to keep this as quiet as possible not to scare people it's bad enough when you have flocks of birds out there flying into you know to jet engines but we have a large being like this and one of them gets sucked into an engine that's gonna that's gonna knock the engine right out no doubt about it and if you're on takeoff or landing that may very well cause an issue um then another reason i believe is of course you know, during the COVID lockdowns, uh, traffic at the airports was cut back a lot. I mean, and uh, the airlines and, and and such were losing money, and they weren't making what they were. And uh, I, I think they're they're just trying to keep the public from getting scared about flying. So I, I think they have multiple reasons as to why they're keep trying to keep it quiet. But you know. It doesn't, they aren't doing us any favors. Uh, Joseph Schramm, could that, could they be angel, demons, or alien? Uh, well, yeah, I guess they could be. Uh, we have no, we have no proof of any of that. Um, all I all we do know is that they do appear to be flesh and blood beings. Uh, they're not apparitions. They seem to be solid. Um, they do make noises, and of course, you know. Uh, I, I my personal feeling is that they're an interdimensional being, something that's moving in and out of a certain dimension, a linear dimension to our dimension to our Earth plane. Uh Sure, they could be angels, demons, or aliens if you if you believe that that you know that may be what they are. I, I'm not going to say that's what they are. Um, there has been some association with other humanoids and possible alien beings with these some of these sightings. So uh, could they be alien? Sure. Could they be otherworldly? Absolutely. But you know, to this point, from the from the information that we have received. I think it's safe to say that, or the, the safer moniker to put on these things are they're ultra terrestrials. Maria Snyder, do you think the chaotic energy of a, a massive airport could be an attraction for them? Possibly. Uh I don't know though. I mean, sure. I mean, that that that's possible. 
there's a lot going on in the airport. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of um, a lot of movement. A lot of things going on. Uh, it's a, it's a, an excellent area if they want to be seen. That's a good place to show up at, especially in cargo areas where there is activity and there are cargo workers there and such. So absolutely, I mean, I guess it could be. Any other questions? Okay, well, you know, thanks each and all of you for watching and, and chatting. Um, it's truly appreciated. Uh, please like and subscribe and share. And uh, like I said, next week, next Friday, I'm going to do a show. Uh, probably the last of the series that'll have a few of the other sightings around the airport and maybe a few other sightings as well. I might be making an extended uh, presentation for it being the last one because the week after is when I leave for Chicago. So I might have a Wednesday night show the week after next, but I'm not sure what's going on. But next Friday, I will definitely do a last installment of these uh, Chicago Mothman sightings and reports. So again, if you have a sighting or encounter report that you'd like to be considered for the personal reports show or post on Fams and Monsters, uh, feel free to forward to my email at lonstrickler@famsandmonsters.com. So until we meet again, stay healthy and stay safe. Good night.